Welcome to week three. Uh, hope you're enjoying the content so far. This week we're going to talk about um, kind of the early phase of growth, uh, formation, um, orientation and exploration, and then transition. So thinking about that first kind of period when folks are getting started. So when we think about the formation of the group, this is really of the utmost importance. Um, when we think about um, how we're putting a group together, who's going to be a member of that group, what's going to be the selection process, um, what will be inclusion and exclusion criteria. It's, it's really, when we think about that, and, and you'll read about this in your chapter, Irvin Yalom has been instrumental in helping us to um, understand um, the, the most effective methods by which a group therapy is effective and the processes of group therapy are most effective for clients. Formation is that first part and it's really up to the facilitators and those who are uh, running the programs and, and formulating these groups to make sure that um, we're putting together um, a group that's going to be able to work cohesively and function high together. Otherwise, it could really lead to not only not being helpful, but could potentially be harmful. And so we wanna think about um, screening interviews, what's gonna be our selection process and criteria, um, what are gonna be practical considerations as far as forming the group, how many people are gonna be in it, what's our cap, is it open or closed? Um, so we really should devote a good deal of time to um, preparing group members for this group experience. We wanna also the, uh, teach them about the basics of the group process so that they understand. Maybe they do an orientation, maybe it's an individual therapy session before they get started into group. Um, we often, uh, in programs that I've been involved with, working with the forensic population, we'll do orientation that they have to attend before they even start group. And the orientation really um, helps them prepare for what does it mean to be in group, what's feedback look like, what's the expectations, what's the rules, guidelines, what are um, our, what's our role uh, in terms of the uh, program and, and um, our responsibilities to the client and that kind of thing. So when the group gets started and you have all that in place, they really start off um, in the kind of uh, orientation exploration phase. This is when uh, they're learning to build trust in that group. Uh, participants will tend to kind of look to the leader more so than to one another when they're talking or asking questions. Um, and so this can be um, kind of um, their kind of getting to know each other process and getting acquainted and uh, feeling a sense of comfort. It takes a little time and, and each group will, will take its own time with that. Um, but you'll see the transition as you start to see people um, talking more with one another, learning to give feedback, seeming a little more relaxed um, and getting uh, into a little bit more uh, depth in terms of their content. So um, the transition into the next uh, phase is really um, still early in the, tr in the group, um, but the characteristics of the group are gonna start to come out. Um, things like anxiety, defensiveness, resistance to change. You'll start to see people struggling for control. So their real personalities are coming through into, you know, into the group as to who they are. So if they tend to be a nurturer, they're going to be the nurturer in group as well. If they tend to be someone who takes the lead on things, you'll see them taking the lead in group. And there could be two leaders in the group and they're going to be kind of battling for leadership role. Um, and so there's anxiety around this as well because people are trying to find their place. Sometimes conflicts can occur during this time um, and the resistances are often um, kind of central just in terms of uh, them not really knowing what their role is and whether, uh, whether this is even going to be worth their time or if it's going to be constructive or not. Oftentimes resistance is um, the result of underlying fears and anxieties or people having ambivalence over wanting to um, be in the group or take the risks that are really um, inherent in the group process. Um, fears about making mistakes in front of others um, and being judged. And so um, some of those uh, personality things that um, are part of who they are, maybe part of why they're in group, are gonna start to come through in that process as they're transitioning into um, who they are in this group. Um, forms of resistance that you might see in a group is um, uh, coming in late, uh, sitting outside of the group. I had a guy that sat outside a group, um, outside of the circle, kind of shoved his chair way back uh, for probably the first six months of group. Um, he did very well later and he moved his chair when he was ready to move his chair. Um, but again, it was like six or eight months before he even butted up to the, kind of in the circle, he was significantly back and really didn't want to be part of group. So that's a form of resistance. Sometimes silence will be something that you'll see as far as resistance. Um, 
uh, folks, uh, like I, said, I think I said, coming in late or just not engaging or um, or trying to take control and trying to over over talk or overdo things. And so you'll see um, some of the resistances coming out in some of these ways. Um, I'm just trying to think if there's other resistances that I've seen. Um, anger, sometimes you'll see anger. You'll see people just um, uh, being mad about everything, um, resisting everything just in terms of like the rules or guidelines or um, any of the discussion, um, but you know, that kind of thing. So anyways, um, this is kind of the first starter group. So, um, you know, just get through the chapter. I hope you enjoy it. I think group therapy is, is one of the most fascinating forms of, uh, of therapeutic technique. I've been um, involved in doing group therapy for many, many, many years. And um, it's, it's amazing to watch um, a group become cohesive and to really do the work they need to do. But there's a lot of thought that goes into it and a lot of preparation. Um, and some of these things that we're talking about in terms of the early parts are also a big piece of that and being very mindful of um, what, con what will constitute um, a healthy group. So if you have questions about the content, please feel free to shoot me an email. Otherwise, be sure to read the chapter, um, get through the PowerPoints. Um, if the lecture is helpful, that's, I'm hopeful for that. Um, and watch your Canvas page for due dates. All right, have a great week three.